Hello there, um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, you're most welcome again to Grace Community Church Red Hill. Uh, Church Online, thank you once again for joining in. Uh, we hope that you are blessed. You've been blessed as always, and um, it's a pleasure. Um, we want to say sit back, relax, as we enter into a time of worship and uh, as we join hands and praise the Lord together. May I also take this opportunity to encourage everyone that um, if you ever need to talk, if you are in material um, need as well or financial need, please dial the hope line on the screen and our team will be happy to talk through with yourself. More power to you. Sit back, enjoy the worship, and I'll see you at the end of the at the, at the end of the worship and praise. shall know that your tent is at peace and you shall inspect your fold and miss nothing you shall know also that your offspring shall be many and the descendants like the grass of the earth you shall come to your grave in ripe old age like a sheaf gathered up in its season behold this we have searched out it is true here and known it is for your good good morning Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to Grace Community Church Redhill where we are delighted to have you join us this Sunday morning and so we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to give your offerings and your tithing. You see here at Grace Community Church we're a Bible believing given church and as such your offerings and your tithing not only helps us not only aids us to help the community but it helps us further the kingdom of God at large and so we have an updated charity account the details of which are Grace Community Church Red Hill the account number 039-398-04 the number again 039-398-04 the sort code 208813. The number again 208813. God bless you abundantly as you give. Welcome once again and enjoy the rest of the service. Jesus, we just give you all the glory in this place this morning. We just worship you, we honor you, we welcome you, O oh God, we welcome you, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Father, we said, have your way, have your way among your children, have your way among your people, Lord. Oh, we exalt your name, we exalt you, we lift you on high, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. Lord God, you are worthy, you are worthy to be exalted, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, when the music fades, hallelujah, we bless your name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Worship team, want to say God bless you. Um, our hearts and our souls are filled up with His praise and worship. This psalm is said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not through their beautiful time to, to worship the Lord. For today, I'm speaking, I just want to speak briefly on the topic uh, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Um, if you can, uh, please uh, give me a high five. If you can, high five me and say, Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. All right, so. Come with me to the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, uh, Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through to verses 10. However, we're just going to read, uh, we're going to read up to verses 5. Uh, so you may follow us, you may follow the scripture on the screen. Um, Acts chapter 28, verses 1, and I read, shall we hear the word of the Lord? Now when they had, when they had escaped, when they had escaped, then they found themselves, they found out that the island was called Morta or Melita. Now, and the native showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But verses 3, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them in the fire, guess what? A viper came out and held on to Paul's hand and um, a viper came and fastened, other versions would say, 
and we fastened on unto Paul's hand. So, verses 4, when the natives saw the creature, saw the viper hanging on to Paul's hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Verses 5, which is the core of my message. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is it okay? Shall we have a word of prayer? Father, we truly want to thank you. May this morning, as we've come to hear from you and have an encounter with your presence, may we experience your manifold presence in our homes, in our offices, in our cars, in the name of Jesus. May we have an encounter with you as never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm speaking on the team. Shake it off. Shake it off. Again, uh, do you want to repeat after me? Shake it off. All right. So, a brief and as a brief introduction to a scripture we just read. So, um, in, in Acts chapter 28, in fact, the, the, the summary of Acts chapter 20, to have a better understanding of Acts chapter 28, I would recommend you take a step back and then have a look at Acts chapter 27. Uh, and then it, it paints a better picture, it paints the, the it paints a larger perspective of what was happening. So hearing hearing were 276 prisoners, including Paul, right, on board a ship, right? And um a, a Paul inclusive, these these guys were all prisoners, and they were being taken to Rome. To be tried as prisoners, right? So that was um, they, they were on their way to be tried uh, before Caesar in Rome, and uh, they have jammed 276 people. And uh, the scripture says, as they journeyed along, uh, the the boat with which they found themselves encountered a terrible storm. And guess what? Um, the storm battered the ship left, right, front, backwards, north, south, east, and west. So much so that the ship had to break up. And some way, somehow, uh, miraculously, all 276 of them found themselves on an island called Malta, uh, Melita, uh, modern day Malta. And none of them, neither of the 276 was missing, neither of the 276 uh, was unaccounted for. But some way, somehow, all of them made it to the island. And after they had made it to the island, they encountered barbarians. And then long, long story short, the barbarians began to help them, to began to clothe them, began to feed them. And then Paul decides to rekindle the, 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 the fire because they were cold, picked up a stick, and guess what? A snake from the way bit Paul's, a bit Paul, uh, and then held on to his hand. At that point, the barbarians do conclude that, you know what, this man is a murderer. Uh, that is why the snake had bitten it. Okay, so that's a brief a brief background of Acts chapter 28, uh, 27 through to 28. So we, we have a bigger perspective of what we're dealing with. Now, by the way, I've noticed that the, 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 the whole journey of being a Christian or the whole Christendom journey is the ability to shake things off, right, and keep pressing forward. So Paul, the apostle, says, this one thing I do, right, that I keep my eyes fixed on the goal and I'm constantly pushing forward. So yesterday's glory, yesterday's success, yesterday's honor, thank you Jesus for it, but I don't, I don't relax, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't, uh, I don't, um, I don't, I don't let the success get into my head, but you know, I thank the Lord and I keep on pushing on. Think about it, Joseph had to shake off the treatment of his brothers. They, they more treated him, but hey, Joseph had to deal, had to learn to shake them off. David had to shake the towns of Goliath, right? Job had to shake off the advice of his friends when he was going through his adversity. The woman at the well uh, who met Jesus had to shake off her past. Uh, equally, the woman with the issue of blood, if you remember, right, she had to shake off the doctor's report. And Lazarus, good old Lazarus, had to shake off the graveyard clothing. So, again, leads me to the point that um, the whole kingdom is about shaking off and then constantly, you know, pushing on, pushing on, pushing on. So, um, emphasis, I want to begin off with when they had escaped. Acts chapter 28 verses 1 when they had escaped it reminds me of a story that I think um, 
a few a few of us may have had me shade a couple of times and that years ago years ago indeed um i was told a story that um my my uh, my great 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 granddad was a hunter and that years ago he had gone to to the wood the african wood the african forest to go and um, look for a prey uh unknowingly to him he got to this this junction and then he set up a trap a trap right a trap uh and then as it is with most hunters they set up the trap they go take a break or they go look for other potential prey, and then come back later so uh, two hours later, um, this this hunter, my great great granddad, comes back and then he discovers that the trap has caught an unusual bed. Uh, so as the bed and, and the bed is 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 trying its very best, its possible best, right to to come out of the trap. And the more it tries, the more um, it finds it difficult. So the hunter. Uh, a few meters away, a few kilometers away from the bed, stares at the bed. The bed in turn stares at the hunter. Uh, guess what? At this point, the hunter readies his um, his pistol. Uh, we call it um, AK-47. Readies his AK-47. Stares at the eye of the bed. The bed also in turn stares at the hunter. And then, by this point, readies releases the first um, shot. Some way, somehow, it misses the bed. Um, readies the second bullet aims at the bed, the bed is staring at the hunter, the hunter is also staring at the, at the, at the bed, right? Readies the second shot, releases, and then guess what? It misses again the second time. By this time, the bed begins to uh, begins to release his wings and is flapping his wings. Don't forget, the bed is still stuck in the trap, right? And the bed readies his wings, begins to flap it one at a time, one, two, and the hunter is gazing at the eyes of the bed. The bed is also in turn gazing at the eyes of the of the of the hunter so um, right before the hunter all this while the hunter is still aiming to shoot at the bed and then right before the eyes of the hunter the bed plus the trap don't forget this bed was in the trap the bed plus the trap so in a sense the bed had lifted itself off right including the trap and right up in the sky the bed is flying up 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 higher and higher and guess what the hunter is still you know gazing in the skies looking to shoot the bed and to date the bed plus the hunter as i'm told were never seen again now later on the hunter takes a bit of a breather and then begins to wonder what has just happened and then it just dawns on him that the prey sorry the the trap had not caught no ordinary bed but it had caught an eagle can i repeat it again that the trap had not caught no ordinary bed but that of an eagle ladies and gentlemen uh, can i at this point announce or encourage or by say encourage somebody by saying look not every bed not every animal right even though it is trapped like the eagle would still lose his life right so if if imagine if the if the trap had caught say a rabbit i'm sure you would agree with me that that very day that very moment that very hour the life of the rabbit would have come to an end but not for that of an eagle right somewhere somehow and it leads me on to my point that look um the, the psalmist said my lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help oftentimes look we fall into the trap of the enemy so many times, yet some way, somehow, the grace of God is sufficient for us. Sometimes we look back and we're like, how did we escape that accident? How did we escape that medical condition? How did we escape that disaster? A few days ago, I am sure most of us did witness the um the explosion in beirut and one of the ladies one of the people who've really captured my attention is that of this couple who a few meters away from the from the blast site where we're getting ready for their matri matrimonial photos and some way somehow as they were just getting ready to take their matrimonial their photos they hear the 
the blast from afar off and somewhere somehow as people are perishing as people are losing their life somewhere somehow they manage to escape the disaster people of god it leads me back i'm talking of acts chapter 20 verses 1 when they had escaped when they had escaped can i just announce to you that look even in the motor accident not everybody perishes even in the plane disaster not everybody perishes i'm talking about the grace of god that got over our soul our spirits our bodies that even when unknowingly sometimes we fall into a trap the scripture says that our enemy do not rejoice over me because when i fall seven times i will arise this morning can i proclaim a jubilee message to your spirit that your soul has escaped i love it no wonder the psalmist said my soul has escaped like a bed from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and my help is in the name of the Lord. So let me tie this snare, let me tie the story of the psalmist to that of the hunter, right? My soul has escaped like a bird, like a bird, like an eagle bird from the from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. Till date, till date, the hunter is still looking for that ego and can i just announce to somebody that look your soul and everything that pertains to you is like that of the ego sometimes i've already as i've already mentioned unknowingly um sometimes ignorantly sometimes um on on planned some way somehow we fall into we get into certain traps we get into certain conditions that we just don't know but guess what the scripture says when they had escaped Escaped. when they had escaped the storm is it okay for me to encourage your brother and sister and uncle and mom that your soul will escape the storm in the name of jesus your soul will run away your soul your soul your soul your soul will escape the storm right your soul will escape the when they had escaped like the eagle i talked about right even when you are falling even when you are down his grace is sufficient for you it will lift you up it will ride it to it will it will lift you up to the place where you come to the place where Mary said in Luke chapter 1 verse 44 that you have remembered me in my low estate and people of God look the truth of the matter is there cometh a point in time where we all go through low estate moment it might be a low estate of um, a little stood a, 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 a fiscal low estate or a spiritual low estate but you see when we are in a low estate he finds us and then he, he just does not find us like the like the prodigal son, but he meets us halfway and then he welcomes us, embraces us, right, and then we close us. This morning, I encourage somebody, please repeat after me if you can, that my soul has escaped. My soul has escaped. So back to Acts chapter 28, verses 1. When they had escaped, sometimes I take a, a reflection, I take a step back, and I, I ask myself, how did I escape that situation? I just don't know how, when, I just don't know. A few, about two or three years ago, myself and a friend, we are driven to London, and on our way back, I was one driving. I was extremely tired, physically broken. So I said to the friend, and that is something I do very often, that look, what is it, where is it I'm rushing to? I look for a safe place, right, an offside road, very safe, I mean, very far off from the main road. We look for the safe place, we both parked, and then you know what, we pulled our seat back, we reclined the seat back, and then guess what, we slept. Um, this was around around 11 p.m. Around 2 a.m. I was the first to wake up. I all of a sudden I woke up of my sleep and I felt something unusual had happened. Guess what? Um, so being on the driver's side, I looked at my I tried opening my door and I realized that the door there was something wrong with it. And then further I noticed that the, the driver's mirror had, uh, had disappeared. And so I, I, I woke up my I woke up my brother and said, Edward, Edward, come on, wake up, check this out. So we all started looking around. And guess what? People go during our sleep, in the midst of our deep sleep, guess what? A car is somebody had driven uh, into us so much so that because the two of us, the both of us were so tired, we did not even hear the least sound. Guess what? And then at that point we were like, oh God. So if if we had died, if we had died, this I would have died in our sleep. 
And then at that point, I remember Acts chapter 20, verses 1. When we had escaped in our sleep, and I'm sure I'm speaking to somebody, I'm speaking to a friend, I'm speaking to a colleague that, you know, like I said, you don't even know how. When they had escaped, may you escape every demonic situation. May you escape the snare of the fowler in the name of Jesus. So again, come with me at chapter 20. So don't forget point number one, when they had escaped. So if you're writing it down, your soul shall escape. Your soul, God shall pre preserve your soul and everything that pertains to you. Don't forget, right? So when they had escaped, and I said again, your soul will escape. You know, in the midst of COVID-19, people of God, yes, I do appreciate that the pandemic has been disastrous and its ripple effects has been crazy, has been nothing short of of, of nothing short but overwhelming. The hearts are broken. The governments are confused. Economic cannot predict what is going on. Right? And it's so confusing. A friend said to me a few days ago, I have stopped listening to the news because I can't make sense of what that's going on. But I tell you what, in the midst of the corona COVID pandemic, the Lord will lead you to a place called your point of escape. Or did I, did, I, did I hear an amen? The Lord will lead you, the Lord will usher you to that place called your escape point. Okay, mindful of time, but so when they had escaped, don't forget that. When they had escaped. So point number two, in Acts chapter 19, verses 21, it, it is an interesting thing. Acts chapter 19, verses 21, here the Apostle Paul, uh, uh, Apostle Paul, um, a few words. Paul, and I read the word of the Lord, 19 verses 21. Paul had purpose in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. Can I repeat that again? So, this is Acts chapter 19 verses 21. This is Paul saying, after I have gone, after I have been through after I've been through play, after I've passed through Macedonia, I've passed to Jerusalem, I must also see Rome. So this is the Apostle Paul. This was in verses 19, right? This is the Apostle Paul, right? A few a few chapters down, a few chapters behind, had purpose and at the end in his heart to go to Rome to share the gospel of the Lord. Think about it. And guess what? Little did Paul think that God was going to use a storm. God was going to use a shipwreck to get him to his destination. Can I repeat that again? Right? Little did Paul know, or little did Paul even think that God was going to use a, a shipwreck and as well a storm along with prisoners to get him to his destination. If somebody listen, has God ever changed your agenda before? Has God ever changed your route map before? Has God ever changed your course of plan? In which way? You had A, B, C, D, E, F at the beginning of the year. And God says, no, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. I love it when my, my brother, Pastor Gabby, and Lady Sharon always say, you know what, at the beginning of the year, oh, you know what, we, this were our plans. But somewhere, somehow, God diverted our plans. And you see, he does it in such a way that it all works together for your good. And I'm sure somebody's doing the lesson this morning who is very troubled because Corona has really messed up your plan. Oh yes, COVID has messed things up. The, the whole plan is upside down. And somebody's really worried because things haven't worked as you would have wished. Can I encourage a brother, a sister, a mom, an uncle this morning? Now look, all things, all things, all things, come on, repeat after me, all things, repeat after me, all things are working together for you. It's like a puzzle. Sometimes you don't need to understand because he knows the beginning from the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. And sometimes when I'm limited, I say we only see a tiny portion and say, you know what? You may not know when, you may not know how, but I, the Lord, I will do it for you. Right? So when Paul had purpose to get to Rome, yet he had no idea in his, in his little understanding, he thought the journey to Rome was going to be the standard, usual, you know, get on a ship, make his way to Rome. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I I needed to encounter 276 prisoners who have no idea of the Lord. I needed to first go to Melita, to Malta, cause a revival, shake the land, a revival that generations down the line will still be felt. And 
And to date, after that revival, Christianity spread out to the nations of the world. And we are talking about God re-amending, God redesigning Paul's plan. Look, have you ever been at that like I said earlier, where God has really messed you up and you're confused? You're upset with God. You don't, you know, you're asking God so many questions. You're asking God so many, you, you put in so many answer questions. God is saying, you know what? I am that I am. And I know, and I know, and I know. It's all working, and I know, and I know that hey, in all things, you are more than a conqueror, right? So, again, mindful of time. So, Paul is saying, right, Paul had purpose in his heart, and somewhere, somehow, God messes, God changes the whole calendar, God changes the whole plan. Yet, he gets him, right? He gets him, he gets him to room but not according to his will not according to paul's will but that the lord's will i pray this morning that look you may be fighting over that circumstance you may be fighting over that decision you may be fighting over that 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 uh, you are having sleepless night over the situation and it's tearing your heart apart it's tearing the relationship apart and god is saying you know what not your will but my will be done and i pray that this morning may god meet you at that point where your heart may you experience the calmness of god may you experience the tranquility of god oh yes it's a very difficult situation but you know what sometimes you know behind the scenes he's cooking the whole show so sometimes you just need to take a breath and say god have your way have your way spirit of god have your way working us and have your way hallelujah all right so don't forget he messed up paul's plan and somewhere somehow right paul and the 276 prisons find themselves on an island called Mort. i love it aw toza one of his favorite quotations that i love so much he used to always read, read, read out is you travel an appointed way think about it you travel an appointed way, right? And that sometimes, you know, we just need to allow him, right, to work on us, to breathe on us, to just lead us anyhow, anywhere, right? And just, and just like, like the, like the prophet Samuel, um, uh, so the, the, um, uh, the priest says to him, when you hear that voice again, just say, Master, thy servant, hear it. And there are times you just need to come to the place and say, you know what, Lord, as you will, as you will, as you will, as you will. Now, point number three, point number three, mindful of time. Come with me to Acts chapter 27, verse 39. Acts chapter 27, verse 39. Are you there? Acts chapter 27, verse 39. And when it was day, they knew not the land. Think about it. When it was day, Ah, yeah, 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 my goodness. When it was day, they knew not the land. Look, listen, have you ever been at that junction before where you are like, is this me? How did I get here? How did I make it? How did I make the cut? How was I rewarded the job? How did I outscale that situation? How did I literally get to this thing? Have you been there before? You're like, really? Is this me? Now hear me. Here are the 276 prisoners on board a ship. Now, if you've ever had the chance or if you've ever been privileged to sit in a wooden ship before, right, and you notice a wood, I'm talking of biblical times. So we're not talking of modern day ships with sophisticated modern equipments and instruments. No, I'm talking of a very basic ship with very basic instruments. Now, by the way, those of us who do remember a bit of our geography, right, the island of Malta was a very tiny island, 18 miles, 18, 8, 18 miles, uh, 18 miles in, in length and then 8 miles in width. So it was not an extremely, right, big island, right? And picture the island of Malta in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean. Picture it. I mean, your geography will tell you that the Indian Ocean is this huge, vast ocean, right? And you have that tiny island by 18 miles long, right? 18 by 18, 18 miles long. And then, even to make it worse, you have a tiny insignificant ship. Let me paint that picture well for you. So picture this huge ocean, and then 
on this ocean is a ship with 276 prisoners who are literally insignificant looking at the vast size of the ocean and they encounter a storm and a hand is upon because in Acts chapter 27 the Lord had prophesied to Paul that you will encounter a storm but behold I, will, I have got you in the palm of my hand so much so that none of you will perish in the storm people of God can I just announce to you that look he that is within us John chapter 4, John chapter 4 verses 4 1 John 4 verse 4 my little children do not be afraid for he that is in you he that watches over Israel is bigger is bigger than he that is of the world can I encourage you again a brother a sister a mom and uncle that hey do not be afraid oh yes look Paul and the 276 prisoners in the middle of the, of the Mediterranean Sea are, are literally insignificant. But you see, when the hand of God is upon an insignificant ship in the middle of a vast sea, that ship becomes significant. And ask the question this, this, this morning, whose hand is upon you? Whose cover is upon you? Because it matters a lot in whose hand we place our trust. It matters a lot in whose hands we place our hopes. It matters a lot, not in the ships, no, because the ships cannot withstand the storms and the wind, no. But you see, if our hands are in his hands, Psalm 31 verses 15, my life is in your hands. Save me from my enemy's hands. Save me from those who are chasing me. And therefore this morning again, I encourage a brother, a sister, an uncle, a mom, that look, when our lives are in his hands, picture a young child looking up to the parents, clinging on to the parents' hand. And at that point, they're about to cross a road. They're about, they at a zebra crossing, they're about to cross a road. To the young child, the as long as the parents are in charge they are okay and most of you see the young kids like that they are dancing they are jumping around and to them they know that as long as the parents have got their hands they are okay today this morning i want to encourage you that look he's got a whole world in his hands and he's got you in the palm of his hands He's got you, just like the 276 priest. It reminds me of the young man called Moses, right? as insignificant as he was, placed in a basket and then left to die on the sea. And the biblical Bible historians tell us that at that particular time, there were sharks, there were, there were crocodiles, there were all kinds of, of, um, of, um, of, of creatures in the sea ready to pounce on the baby. By the way, Sharks and crocodiles and all the and all the prince of the of the sea are attracted by some. And here's a little boy Moses crying his heart out, unknowingly crying his heart out. And uh, by this time, the crocodiles, the sharks, and all the prince of the sea are being drawn to it. But I guess what? The closer they get to him, they realize that an unknown hand is on top of the baby boy, and your unknown hand is navigating the baby boy through the dangerous the dangerous waters and slowly one at a time the unknown hand leads the baby boy right to its destination and he gets to his destination and guess what and guess what here were the promise keepers here were the people who were ordained and set by god to meet the boy can i encourage you that you could behind the scenes his hand is upon you and so much what so was it that the hand of the Lord was upon Paul and the 276 prisoners. And as they are, they are going through the storm and they are going through the stormy waters, the choppy waters, a hand is upon them. Look, it's a big miracle. And sometimes these are the things we take for granted. To survive a storm in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea is not to be taken for granted. Oh yes, can I repeat it again? The fact that you woke up alive today, the fact that you are well, the fact that the grace of God has located you is never to be taken for granted. Oh yes, oh yes, because look, however you look at it, others did not survive it. Can I just encourage your brother and sister not to take your salvation for granted, not to take, right, not to take the gift of God, not to take your relationship for God for granted because it is very, very special.
Hallelujah. So Paul and the 276 prisoners, I'm, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this within the time I've located, but the Lord will help. I'm trusting that the Lord will help me. So Paul and the 276 prisoners are battling, they are battling the winds, they are battling the storms. And, and scripture says, when it was day, they did not. I pray and I, and I, I can, 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 can we join hands wherever you are? Can we join hands? Can we, can we, can we hold hands wherever you are? I pray and we join hands and we prophesy into 2019 as well as into 2020 that come 2020 and beyond, our story will be when it was day, we did not know how. We did not know when, but the Lord saw us through. May that be your story that come a year by this time, come two years by this time, come three years from now, you look back at 2020 and say, when it was day, I don't know how God brought me this far. I don't know how the business of it. I don't know how I got here. Ebenezer, amen. All right, so mindful of time, when it was day, they did not know where they were. Hallelujah, I love it, I love it. Corey, Corey Timboom, who, who I'm sure most of us have heard of who was, who was blind, right, makes a profound statement. She says, when Jesus takes your hand, right, when Jesus, he keeps you tight, when Jesus keeps you tight, he leads you through your whole life, and when Jesus leads you through your life, he brings you safely home. In whose hand? And I pray that whoever, whoever, which, whoever that is doing the lesson, in case you don't have a relationship with the Lord, in case your life is not in His hand, I pray that, that you come to that stage and where you commit and put your hands and trust your hand and trust everything that is within you into His hands. Amen. Guess what? So, Scripture says, and when it was day, they did not know where they were. Now think about this for a brief moment. Let me, let me, let me just, let me just, let me share a few things um, um, on this particular, uh, on this particular um, uh, chapter, on this particular verse. When it was day, we did not know where they were, right? So I've already talked about the fact that they were battered by the storm. And I love it, verses 27, come with me, 27 verses 44. Acts chapter 27 verse 44, verse 44, come with me, come with me, come with me, we'll probably, we'll probably may end on 27 verse 44 and then hopefully another time we'll carry on. Acts chapter 27 verses 44, oh my God, now hear, hear the word of the Lord, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship, and so it was that they all escaped safely, oh Jesus, can we repeat that again? And the rest, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. The new translation, uh, the NLT, new translation, new, new living translation uh, version, uh, puts it better. It reads that, and they some held on to broken, to the broken wood. In my hand here is a broken wood. See? In my hand here is a broken. I'm sure almost every one of us has encountered a broken wood before. People of God, can I just encourage and say to somebody, it is out of the broken soil that a seed grows and comes out of. It is of out of the broken heart. It is out of the broken life. It is out of the broken situation that glory cometh thereof. Then they held on to the broken pieces. Oh my goodness. It is out of a broken worship that glory comes thereof. And they held on. So picture 276 prisoners. And I could imagine perhaps Paul holding on to a broken piece. Uh, prisoner A holding on to a broken piece. Prisoner B holding on to a broken piece. And they all had to hold on somewhere, somehow to a broken piece. Have you ever encountered brokenness before? Have you ever encountered brokenness so much so that it looks like all hope is gone? Have you ever been at a place where it feels like that is it? I have lost it. And God is saying, when you've come to your wit end, when you've come to ground zero, that is when I take over the situation. And in your brokenness, I show forth my glory. And I can see Paul holding on right to a broken piece of the
the wood. And can I just encourage somebody that they come at a point in life, regardless of who you are, where we all encounter broken situations, we encounter broken circumstances, and there are times we are disappointed. There are times life has been unfair to us. There are times we are at that stage where we feel, you know what, enough, we are tired. And those are the moments we come before him with our broken situations and we lay it at his feet, right? And we say, God, in you we trust and in you we move and we have our being. Take over the situation. And in those broken situations, scripture says he uses the foolish things of the world, of the world to confound the wise. And in our broken situation, it was a broken Paul. It was a broken, confused Paul. And it was a broken King David that I come to that place and say, you know what? I give I give you all my all. I give you my all and I worship you. And out of a broken worship cometh forth the glory that restores and uplifts an ordinary man to become a king. This morning I'm talking to you about a broken wood. Out of a broken pot, out of a broken soil comes a man, comes the clay of jar brokenness and i'm speaking about brokenness and people of God, scripture says they all held on to a broken part of the ship oh yes they come look there comes a point in time in life where you know like the woman whose son whose only child right was dying and she approached jesus and he says son of david have mercy on me of course she was an outsider she was not she was not a gentile right and and she was a jew and all she knew all the names the only name she knew was that was son of David and that's all she stick she held on to look they come at a point in time it might be your worship it might be your prayer it might be your Bible study it might be that scripture that one scripture it might be your fighting it might be your faithfulness it might be your commitment to the things of God and in moments of adversity in your stormy situation you hold on to that broken peace like in Hezekiah and say Lord remember my sacrifices Lord remember my broken sacrifices and Lord remember my situation and I pray and I prophesy to everyone doing the listening that even in this condition may the Lord remember your broken situation may the Lord remember your brokenness may the Lord remember your broken worship may the Lord remember your broken sacrifice may the Lord remember your broken offerings may the Lord remember your broken commitment may the Lord remember your broken evangelism it is out of the broken wood comes the glory comes the escape route and the scripture says they held on hold on to that hope that which you have been taught don't lose the faith the very foundation these are the very things we were taught and Paul the apostle said the very things I've taught you hold on to it hold on to your faith don't lose it salvation is very expensive don't lose it before you realize that it is a very expensive commodity grace is expensive don't abuse it hold on the broken wood right anointing is expensive don't abuse it right the calling of god is expensive don't abuse it hold on to that wood hold on for the same wood will lead you to the land of glory amen the scripture says they held on to a broken wood i'm asking to somebody going through a broken broken situation a broken relationship a broken condition a broken marriage a broken vision a broken dream a broken situation where you're up and where you feel you know what this is it this is it this is it i'm going to die i'm going to perish in the mediterranean sea and as they held on hold on don't give up mama no 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 don't give up covid is bad don't give up the best is yet to come don't give up you can't die in the Mediterranean Sea. Not when the hand of God is upon you. Not when the calling of God is upon you. Not when the grace of God is upon you. Your assignment is not complete. Hold on. Hold on. For help is on the way. Help is on the way. And the prophet said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. What if I told you that 2020 is going to, 2021 is going to be your best year? You have no reason to give up. You have no reason to throw in the towel. Because help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. The scripture says, as I bring my message to an end, the scripture says, and guess what? They got you. They, as they held on to the broken pieces, broken pieces, they found themselves on the island called Melita. In other words, called the island of refuge. The island of refuge. Mortar. In a modern day mortar. And guess what? Scripture says, 
they met barbarians. In other words, they met strange people, right? Melita, Melita simply means a place of help. And they, as I've, as I've told you, the the Okodi, the occupiers of the land or the inhabitants of the land were barbarians. Eh? Now, by the way, um, the, the the ancient Greek used uh, used the term barbarian to refer to foreigners who did not speak the Greek language, right? And uh, these were people who were rude, they were rough, they were harsh, and sometimes they could be cruel, especially if they feel that you are an enemy and you are a threat to them, right? And naturally, barbarians and biblical times were not known to be very friendly people. They were very, very, they, they were very mean people, and, 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 and they, they, it is believed in that there are times they would even kill, you know, just to just to make sure that no enemy comes near their dwelling. And therefore, these were, imagine Paul and the 276 prisoners, battered by the sea, battered by the storm. And then guess what? Next thing, they find themselves on the island called Melita, right? A place of refuge. That is why I told you a few minutes ago that hold on. You'll be surprised that any time you get to the peak of your storm, you get to the peak of your, of your adversity, the next chapter of your life is glory. The next chapter of your life is refuge. The next chapter of your life is is, 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 is an upliftment. The next chapter of your life is your place of rest, right? So God sends barbarians who ordinarily had nothing in common with them. But guess what? I love it. I love it. 28 verses 2. Acts chapter 20 verses 2. I think because of time we'd have to do another session on this. And the scripture says, but they showed us unusual kindness. My goodness, there's somebody here that they showed us unusual kindness people who had nothing in common with them they did not know them and barbarians ordinarily were meant to hurt them were meant to be unpleasant to them but guess what they showed them unusual kindness have you realized permit me to talk briefly about about unusual kindness have you realized that in a world where we find as a where kindness has become so much of a rare commodity think about this carefully and we never get to see or hear of unusual kindness kindness has become so much of an expensive commodity look and people of god i truly want to encourage and challenge a brother a sister that look even in this COVID situation let's reach out i'm i'm, I'm talking of you i'm talking of um, yes the church is doing its own but i, I want you to look around right look out for the brother the sister the colleague the mom the uncle who is in need and say you know what oh yes even though we are going through a difficult time but i want to show you unusual kindness you see unusual kindness is like a f it's like a f it's like a flavor it's like a it's, a it's like an aroma you show it and god has a way of replenishing it back to you a million times unusual unusual kindness i'm talking of unusual kindness years ago i remember I remember getting to a supermarket and uh, uh, if about six, seven years ago, and I will never forget, I will never forget the story that the act of unusual kindness, a, a lady that was going through Twelve time in her life had come and picked a few items with a young baby and it was obvious the lady did not have the means to pay for the item she she had picked yet she maybe she told let me try this card pay chance if it work the lady gets to the checkout right and then try, uh, they, they try the card a few times and then they get this the, the, the teller says to the lady I'm sorry but the card is declined so many times at that point you know the lady is being asked to go and put all the items back and for a brief moment oh my god I remember I I see an ordinary man, an ordinary man, had nothing in common to do with the lady, never knew her from Adam, and says to her, excuse me, excuse me, how much is, is, is the item that she just paid? Um, they mentioned to her, they mentioned to him the amount, and guess what? Not only does she pay for the items, but you know, says to the lady, you know what? Can I, right before her eyes, we told us a joke, the, 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 this gentleman dips his hands into his pocket and before I get yeah, brings out a huge stash of money and then says to me have this right at least make sure that for the next few months you will also experience comfort you also have something to eat for yourself and the baby people of God I'm talking about unusual kindness oftentimes look the people who God has positioned 
close to our lives are there for a reason. And sometimes God is saying to us, God has positioned them, right? They are individuals who are in need, the individuals who are struggling, the individuals who need the help in them. And every now and then, you are like the barbarian. You see them broken, torn, cold, wet, confused. And you're like, no, 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 I have nothing in common with them. But by the way, people of God, sometimes what will bring them to Jesus is that little simple act of kindness. Is that lip, lip, that tiny act of kindness that you may see it as irrelevant? Sometimes it is all that it takes that draws them closer to your goal. And the uh, and the barbarian showed us unusual kindness. Remember, I talked earlier about how unusual kindness is like a sweet smelling aroma. It has a way of you know reaching out later on after you've shown others unusual kindness. So in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7, right? So this is Jonathan. This is, um, this is, um, sorry, this is, um, this is David saying to, to Jonathan, right? That do not fear for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and I will restore you to the land of Saul, you and your father, and you shall eat of my table always. Guess what? Years down the line, Jonathan had done, had shown kindness to the young man called David. And years later, David is saying, is, is there no one in the house of Jonathan that I can repay that act of unusual kindness? I pray that God brings us as a church, Grace Community Church, I pray as an individual. Look, sometimes I keep on saying, sometimes we look too far behind, too far beyond, yet God has brought individuals behind, right in our presence, who need a touch of kindness, who need a rub of touch, a, a rub of kindness, and that's all it takes, right? And David is saying, is there nobody in the house of Jonathan that I can show unusual kindness? You'll be surprised that, look, the the grace you are walking in today is as a result of an unusual kindness. It's as a result of an unusual act of kindness that a grandfather, a great grandfather, a great grandmother, an uncle, a mama, that our mamas, that our papas, right, showed to others. And today, we are the benefits thereof. I pray that God brings us to the stage where we can also replicate that act of kindness. Replicate that act of kindness. I pray God, may God bring us to the place where, you know what, withholding nothing. I love the song says, I give myself to you, withhold, withhold nothing, 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 nothing. And to show them unusual kindness. And the scripture says, and the church, they gave, and they gave, and they gave, and they gave, and they gave. May God bring us back to those old worlds. May God bring us back. May God, look, may God bring us to the place where kindness, we don't need to think before showing kindness, right? So as I bring my message to an end, um, verses 28, uh, 20 verses 2, I end I end with this and then we'll carry on next time. 20 verses 2 reads that, and this time, by this time, Paul, so they've shown them unusual kindness, they've gathered some fire, some sticks, they've gathered some firewood, right, and they've all come together, and as they've come together, Paul, being typical Paul, goes an extra mile, right, to go and gather some more sticks, I'm talking about sticks, some more sticks in order to increase the fire right that they were enjoying so don't forget it was the barbarians who started the fire the barbarians who started the fire right but paul paul's assignment was to increase the fire hallelujah it was the barbarians who started it but paul's mission as i said was to keep the fire burning right um it will surprise you to note that in uh, uh, no wonder in Second Timothy chapter one verse six it reads that stir up the giftings and the fire of God in you a flame right in flame in flame that fire stir it up 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 in the Old Testament by the way God started the fire but it was the responsibility of the priest to keep the fire 
Ben, can I also just say that look, he has, he has, paid, he has bought us with his price, right? He has shed his blood for us on the cross, right? We've come to that place called salvation, but we just don't need to sit down and fold our arms. No, we need to go gather some more sticks and make sure our responsibility is to make sure that the fire keeps on burning. That the fire of God keeps on burning. Our responsibility is He's endowed us with that gifting, He's endowed us with that grace, He's endowed us with that special ability. But our ability, our responsibility is to make sure that we keep the fire aflame. That we don't we don't dim the fire, but like Paul, right, we make sure that the fire is increased. The Lord bless you. I'm mindful of time, I'm going to end my message here. But God willing. Uh, don't forget, uh, 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 let me keep you in suspense. I'll come back to you with part two. And uh, I trust God that we'll be able to see through the rest of the message. It's okay. Can we have a word of prayer? Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. You are a good, good Father. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, number one, Lord, we pray that um, bring us to that place where we will appreciate your grace, your mercy, and say, I did not be the Lord on our side. Number two, Lord, we pray that help us to keep the fire aflame. Number three, Lord, we also pray that, Lord, we will hold on to that gift, that giftings, that grace, that, that th those, very, those very foundation, the sticks that our forefathers, our grand -grand -grand our grandfathers, our, our ancestors have shown us. We hold on to the, to the faith. We hold on to the, to the very foundation of our calling. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that if perchance anybody is at that stage where, Lord, they are broken, they are thinking of giving up, may your grace strengthen them in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and favor you. And I hope to come back to you with part two of this sermon. More power to you. Join us same time next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.